My humble prostration is at the lotus feet of our most beloved Amma, Sadhguru Srimata Amartanta May Devi, world-renowned humanitarian leader and divine mother and guru to millions of our devotees and followers and all the more the chancellor of the Amrita Vishwadya Pitam, which is ranked as the fourth best university in the country by the National Institutional Ranking Framework of the Ministry of Higher Education, Ministry of HRD. And my humble pronouns to Dr. Kanchan K. Malik, our guest of honor and speaker today, Namshaya. Today, there are two sessions start, starting in about 10 minutes. Parallelly, another one in the area of commerce and management, and this one in the area of media education. And today, this session is the eighth session in the whole series of the three day deliberations on the media education in the context of totally the education in the context of uh, national education policy 2020 implementation. So I take this opportunity and feel happy about introducing our Guest of Honor, Dr. Kanjin K. Malik. She is a professor and former head at the Department of Communication at the Central University of Hyderabad. She is a faculty fellow with UNESCO Chair on Community Media since 2011 and editor of the newsletter CR News. She got a PhD in communication from the University of Hyderabad. And she has a dual master's in economics and mass communication. She worked as a journalist with the Economic Times and as faculty in two reputed state universities before joining the University of Hyderabad. Her teaching and research have been focused in the area of community media, women in community communications, journalism studies, and media ethics. She is a co-author of Other Voices, The Struggle for Community Radio in India, the Sage 2007. Her recent book on community radio in South Asia Reclaiming the Airways, it's a publication of the Rutledge in 2020, is co-edited with Sri Vinod Pavarala. And we are all happy and privileged to offer our heartfelt, hearty welcome to Dr. Kanchan K. Malik on behalf of the Amrita Vishwadya Petam University and on behalf of the Faculty of Media, Arts and Commerce and on behalf of the organizers, organizing departments of visual media and communication at Kochi Visual Media, Visual Communication at Mysore and the Department of Communications at our university headquarters. So on behalf of all the participants, by offering humble pranams once again to you and once again to all the participants. Let me offer to you, ma'am, a most hearty welcome. And Dr. Kanjan Malik will be mainly focusing on her deliberations of the paradigms in the new paradigms in the media education. 
in the context of the NEP 2020. I wish all the best to all the participants and hearty welcome once again to Dr. Kanjim K. Malik. I'm sure, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. U. Krishna Kumarji, for your warm welcome. Uh, I'm and uh, for this invitation to talk uh, here uh, as part of your uh, faculty development program. It is an honor, a privilege, and I'm very grateful. I'm uh, grateful for uh, Dr. Dinesh Babu to have been following my work, which is more on the sidelines on the uh, communication and media education. Although, as you have said, my core work is on community media, but I admire the fact that he has been following it. And uh, we all as media educators tend to engage with, uh, you know, the paradigms in communication and media education, especially in the changing times today. So I'll try to dwell on that. Uh, but before that, uh, may I please share my PPT? All right. So let me begin by saying that uh, we are all very aware of uh, the demands that the changing mediascape has been making on communication and media education. We are all very aware of that, uh, of the digital revolution that is happening. And we are looking at new ways of, let us say, delivering the course uh, curriculum or uh, and uh, the skills as well as you know, uh, to, to our media students as media educators and preparing them for a world which has a whole lot of new challenges. Uh, I feel that, uh, you know, uh, at this time when digital revolution is happening, how we still stick to some of the core tenets that are associated with media education is what is the important thing and that is where you know that is going to be the flow of uh, my presentation today and i consider the new education policy 2020 is uh, a great means to keep us uh, on track um, so let if we do a deep reading of uh, the new education policy 2020 and simultaneously combine you know uh, the keywords with media education, use some of the words from the national education policy and others from media ed education and try to generate a cloud. Uh, the crucial concepts that have come out for me are um, uh, holistic and multidisciplinary education. Please try this out sometime, uh, you know, to take one um, core uh, 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 part of the national education policy and some of the things that you relate with community uh, with communication education. And you will see that you know, it kind of gives us a guideline on, uh, you know, what we need to focus uh, uh, on when we are thinking of the new ways of uh, doing uh, what we are doing as media educators. So uh, some of the crucial concepts that capture the essence would be holistic and multidisciplinary education. Uh, digital uh, learning, of course, and teaching, we need to adapt to the times credible evaluation systems, then cutting edge pedagogy. Pedagogy is a focus, uh, is the main focus that we need to keep at this point of time. It is not so much about, you know, uh, what, what, to, what to teach, but how to teach. And then of course, a teaching and learning that is um, directed towards cognitive development. And of course, the whole uh, national education policy is about, uh, you know, it, 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 is, uh, it, it is talking about inclusivity and inclusive culture in several of its provisions. So uh, if I were to tell all the participants today, since I am, uh, you know, we are separated by this uh, uh, wall of technology, uh, so I can't make it so participatory, but I wish I could have. And I could have asked all of you to, you know, just come up with, uh, in your mind for now, uh, the objectives, the objectives that you hold uh, in your head uh, about uh, media education. What do you think? If I were to ask you to come up with one, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, there's a lot of sound in the background. Somebody's mic is on. Yeah, it's gone. So, uh, so if we look at the objectives of media education today, if you were to come up with, uh, you know, one objective each, uh, or all of us uh, have the objectives of media education in mind, uh, 
uh, they are not, uh, you know, they are quite similar to what was being pursued even before. So the main idea is, and digital revolution may not have changed so much of the objectives. It is essentially to educate in the realm of communication, to make our students uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to be able, capable of adapting to the media world, right? Uh, so we need, what, what is needed in the new times is to update the methods and models. So it's more about, you know, updating with the uh, new demands uh, rather than changing the complete objective of media education, which is to prepare our students for the media that exists in the present times. So media uh, education today has to offer responses to the new needs of the changing media technologies. That is a given. So if media technology changes, we move from print uh, focus to uh, audiovisual and then to uh, new media, that all has hap happened. And now we are into this fast um, moving uh, digital revolution. So we need to respond to uh, the technological changes that are happening, no doubt about that. But media education must factor in the uh, technical uh, uh, innovations that have revolutionized media and redefined, but we need to redefine the paradigms in a manner that when we adapt to this digital age, we are not leaving behind, again, as I had said earlier, some of those core objectives of media education that, that you just thought, uh, you know, um, when I asked you to think about them, that you just thought are the basis of uh, any media or communication education. You will all agree with me that we are in a historically amazing moment for education. So education as a whole uh, with the digital revolution uh, happening uh, has, uh, you know, is, is um, witnessing a, a very important and uh, amazing moment. And uh, we all as media educators are a part of that. Digital revolution has modified our lifestyles, habits as teachers also. Uh, as well as our understanding of the world. We have so much more uh, at our disposal to learn from. Traditionally, one of the basic um, uh, objectives of education was linguistic and uh, cognitive literacy. Just as earlier, uh, the focus of education as a whole and not just media education was on uh, linguistic and cognitive literacy and acquisition of skills was more about reading and writing. Today, in the digital revolution era, uh, literacy in the new uh, multimedia and hypermedia are necessary capabilities for using these tools. So uh, education as a whole has started using media. Uh, you know, we are talking about media education, but the education as a whole has started depending upon this new media technology. Uh, the things that... Uh, so. It's, it's, a very, it's very challenging at this time, uh, you know, to not just be giving media education in a manner which is meant for, me, uh, for media students, but also, you know, to be able to use media education to implement the goals of the Indian national policy, uh, Indian national education policy. Uh, Indian na national education policy has lofty ideals and it, they are very challenging. And anything that challenges you tends to bring about, you know, changes in you. As you would agree with me, and I'm sure by now a lot of other resource persons have emphasized on that, that, that the affirmed orientation of the National Education Policy 2020 is towards path-breaking reforms that would transform India into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society. It will make our education system robust and healthy. Uh, an education system that can not only withstand the onslaught of the pandemic, but ensure prosperity and self-reliance for all. But the devil, as they say, is in the detail. The detail of taking this, this national education policy 2020 forward and the right steps to ensure that goals are matched by implementation. So the reality check of uh, National Education Policy 2020 is in its successful execution. Uh, 
and i feel for the successful uh, execution of the national education policy and i will come to how national education what it means for media education but i feel that for the implementation itself of the national education policy media education has to become a core competency so it doesn't have to be taught only as you know a specialized um, uh, uh, course in its own right which it has to but in some way or the other it has to be introduced in all the other curricula also that are being taught so the changing paradigm of media education must be such that it meets the challenges of implementing the lofty ideals of nep and serves as a means for facilitating the reconfiguration of india's education system as envisioned by the ambitious provisions of the nine of uh, the national education policy 2020 and for that integration of media education pedagogy literacy so you can call it by any other name you know uh, literacy media pedagogy uh, it is essential throughout the life cycle of a student's edu- education this is what will equip citizens for adequate use and consumption of the techno media products that we are dealing with today so yes a paradigm change is needed within the media education curriculum but when we look at the curricula as a whole when we look at education as a whole media education media literacy and pedagogy must become a part of it and uh, this is what will build the capacity of our students and of of uh, of people who are at the, you know at, who 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 are uh, receiving media literacy to analyze use and even express in different ways the messages produced by them and to do it responsibly so this is the first point that i wanted to deal with before getting into our core uh, you know um, uh, before getting into uh, the core uh, course or the core uh, subject discipline that we belong to right uh, so what is um, what Uh, the education of n- the new generations what is needed is not only their integration into the society but uh, they should be able to use media for the betterment of the society this is the basis on which uh, i will be introducing the new paradigm saying that yes technology is important technical logical skills are important but for any change to come about in our educational and pedagogical strategies the media must be linked to the betterment of society so the idea is not only to widen and optimize the instrumental abilities of the students but also that they can be critical of everything that impedes the global development of society or which generates injustices and inequalities this is going to be the basis on which i would be introducing some of the ideas that i have in my mind when we take a real look at our uh, you know uh, media curriculum uh, so uh, for the epistemological structure of media uh, pedagogy or education so th- which basically means you know the basis on which you would like to restructure your approach to media ped- pedagogy or education and this applies to the media education that is a part of education as a whole and now more specifically i'm talking about our uh, own core course which is uh, media studies or uh, communication or mass communication journalism there are different names we give to it but some of these uh, core principles remain at the heart of the teaching of all uh, that we are doing so i will be talking mainly about four things here one we must make media education holistic and multidisciplinary as you see it borrows directly from the new education policy then we must create the education 4.0 learning environment this is our response to the digital age to the new technology that is coming in we cannot ignore it right but adapting and adopting it needs to be done with social consciousness in mind right so yes technology efficient uh, you know technology savvy 
uh, aware of what is going around us is important, but uh, education needs to adopt uh, itself to the uh, uh, present times and the present demands of the students. Then, of course, which is what is very important is to enable inclusion, for which multilingualism is very important, and certainly there's a need for a culture of research. And fourth is something which is close to my heart. I feel no education is complete and certainly not communication education if we do not relate it to this skill. I consider it a very important skill, the skill of ethical decision making, which uh, I think should be a part of a media ethics curriculum, which has to be a uh, an indispensable part of any media education. Let me come to the first part. So I come from, a, which is on making media education holistic and multidisciplinary. So I come from a background, I work in the area of communication for development. I come from a background of what is called participatory communication. And participatory communication looks at education as a social process. And the idea behind participatory communication, which must be applied to any media education that is happening now in the present, uh, you know, in the present situation, uh, and in the light of uh, the new um, new uh, national education policy 2020, it must focus on democratizing knowledge and adopting multiple in, uh, multiple interpretations of literacy. There is not just one way of educating. People. There are multiple ways uh, in which uh, you know literacy manifests itself, and we have to give importance to all of that, depending upon the capability and the requirement of the students and the and and the demands from uh, the public. You have to customize your uh, you know way of uh, uh, imparting education accordingly. Uh, I hope I'm clear. My voice is coming clear. Hello. Yes, ma'am, it's clear. OK, so as I was saying, the uh, the first paradigm, so to say, or the first step that needs to be taken is, uh, hello. Yeah, there's some disturbance here. Yeah. OK, uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the most important uh, impo uh, important paradigm that we need to follow is to democratize knowledge and adopt multiple uh, in interpretations of literacy. So uh, the, um, uh, we must realize, uh, and this is the right time to do it, we should have done it long back, and it is not that uh, uh, it was not thought of earlier, but this is a crucial time, uh, you know, when we should be accepting the fact that education is not just about pouring knowledge into the heads of the students or transferring the skill sets so that they become industry ready or equipped. I'm not trying to say that uh, media education or media courses or media curriculum does not have to make them industry equipped. That is one of the objectives to do it, but we don't have to stop there is the point I'm trying to make. We have to redefine the current pedagogical practices so that uh, you know, teaching is made more engaging. It is made more contextual, holistic, participatory and democratic. Those are big words, but every single word uh, means, uh, you know, uh, that uh, is, is a means of making our education effective. So we have to move away from the binaries of thinkers or philosophers or theorists think and these are the practitioners. These are the people who will go and do the job. Doers do. This binary is something we have to move away from. Why can we not have capable practitioners who are also critical thinkers? How? Why can't we have thinking practitioners? That is the. Uh, 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 that is what media education should now be uh, aiming at. So uh, I am going to quote here Paulo Freire, who is arguably one of the you know most renowned philosophers in the area of critical pedagogy. So in his book uh, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, Paulo Freire questioned the prevailing practices of education that reduce students to this uh, status of passive objects to be acted upon by the teacher. Teacher has to dump knowledge into the head of the student. 
student. This is an outdated form of education. Uh, and in this uh, outdated form, the responsibility of the teacher was to simply fill the minds of the students with bits of information. And now, of course, if you turn it to the digital revolution, it will be bytes of information, which constitute knowledge. Uh, this was called uh, this was called by Paulo Freire as the banking model of education. And what was the objective of the banking education? It was to condition people into accepting existing frameworks of power and uh, histor uh, and historical as well as hierarchical agency. That you have to bow down to power. You have to accept things as they are and turn you know, adapt yourself to what is being offered to you. Freire disapproves, I mean, and if you don't do that, if you don't fit into the mold, you are a failure. So that is not the kind of education one is looking at. Freire disapproves the approach where the teachers envisage themselves as the singular possessors of knowledge. They are possessors of knowledge, no doubt, but they are not the only ones. And, uh, you know, they are not the only ones who can make you wise. While students are, uh, that means, only taken as being, you know, unwise, not knowing anything, until teachers pour knowledge into their head, they are going to remain stupid. That is not the approach that the present education has to have. In contrast, good teaching consists of creating the conditions for genuine dialogue. So interactive classrooms is what one is looking at. So instead of the banking method, Freire proposes a give and take reciprocal relationship between the teacher and the student in an environment that is democratic and allows everyone to gain knowledge and learn from each other. We call it in uh, education the, that there has to be co-learning uh, and teacher also has to be a student all of his or her life. right? Uh, Whereas students are not to be considered as completely dumb who have to be given knowledge, but as thinking people with whom you can interact and enrich the, uh, the class or, you know, the uh, subject that you are talking about. So the relationship uh, which is developed through banking method uh, that we talked about between the teacher and the student is characterized by insecurity, suspicion and the fear of one another. So you have to listen to your teacher. If you don't do the assignment, you will get punished, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and you have to always bow down when the teacher is talking to you. Uh, you know, it's kind of a very oppressive control uh, uh, um, uh, as far as students are concerned. They cannot relax and talk to the students about the new ideas that they have, about a different way of thinking that they might have in their head, or the uh, the one and one, 101 questions that they might have in their head. So that rapport has to be created, which is part of what Freire proposes as the critical pedagogy, where the relationship is egalitarian in so far as both the teacher and the students are prepared to uh, and willing to uh, the option of learning from each other. I'm sure a teacher gains a lot from interacting with students and listening to them also, uh, you know, uh, and, the, and from the questions that they ask. Every time we present and we get feedback and uh, there are questions related to, uh, you know, the presentation that one has given, you are able to think about it in so many different ways. So why not in a class? So in such a type of uh, relationship, no one is superior to anyone and there is mutual regard. And the student does not feel scared of, you know, uh, of the teacher. Uh, making a student do assignments uh, uh, should not come out of a fear uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, fear of, uh, of the teacher. It should come out of the will to learn. So thus, uh, there is a need for education to become a communion of sorts between participants through a dialogue uh, characterized by reflexive, reciprocal, and socially relevant exchange. So, uh, you know, if you link your teaching, hello. Yes, hello. I can hear you. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was... Uh, 
Yes. So, uh, yeah, I was saying that, you know, there has to be a reciprocal kind of relationship and a reflexive way of doing, uh, you know, of educating students, which connects it to their lived experiences, the real life that they are leading to, so that they can connect with it and benefit from it. So teachers have to take on, uh, you know, the role as facilitators. Uh, uh, the new paradigm of education must create a pedagogical space that is not only student-centric, but student-produced. So you, the teachers facilitate the students to get engaged and involved with the uh, what they are learning. And the, uh, when they take on the role of being facilitators, they enable students to critically question and analyze situations in a very nuanced way, not just one size fits all kind of way of thinking and interpreting things. So teachers must make students participate in the learning process, feel confident about thinking on is provide students with balanced inputs in both theory and practice. So it shouldn't be just about practice or just about theory to develop professional practitioners who are able to appropriate their skills to diverse social uh, cultural contexts. Right? So they're able to adapt their skills to the need of the hour. And uh, at one point, they might be, you know, they might go along with the market forces and the state policy. Uh, on another point, at another point, uh, you know, what, what uh, takes primacy is the social good, right? So sometimes you can combine market forces, state policy and social good also. So that adaptability has to come with the uh, curriculum and of course the important thing in the national uh, uh, education policy 2020 is the multidisciplinary approach so media education guided by the national education policy 2020 it must change to repurpose or reimagine the existing pedagogical practices teachers as facilitators <laughs> yeah uh, yes, yeah we need facilitators at, at all points in everything we do <laughs> And teachers have to become facilitators also. So I was talking about, you know, other than being, in addition to being facilitators, the approach that we need to have, uh, you know, towards our curriculum is one that is multidisciplinary. So media education guided by the new education policy has to repurpose and reimagine. Uh, of course, the uh, existing pedagogical practices. And the idea is to allow craft. Craft is the skilled part creativity and, uh, you know, critical thinking to cohabitate. So all of these must be, it's not one and the other. It's, it's a combination of all of them. So not, uh, again, as far as students are concerned, when we feel threatened when we are not able to ask questions, uh, you know, ans give answers to all the questions of, uh, by the students. The, the idea is that not all, not all questions have obvious answers. So persuading students to engage with, you know, deeper questions for which they can look for answers on their own or with your help, you know, in areas which are other than communication, probably, right? That uh, it's a vast uh, pool of knowledge from which you have you can get your answers. Encouraging students to do that would be helpful. So an interdisciplinary approach must be incorporated in the syllabi in all departments to encourage media practice that is more inclusive. And this I mean the departments of media itself, you know, uh, to make media practice that is inclusive, cooperative, and broader in terms of thinking, exercising, experimenting, and practices. You have to constantly keep linking, uh, you know, media practice with other disciplines, with the rest of the world, with society, with, uh, you know, other things that are important to a person's living uh, li life itself, right? Uh, so uh, this does not mean uh, in any way that you have to move away from the idea of assignments or, uh, you know, move away from grading. When we say open kind of uh, education, it does not mean that there doesn't have to be rigor. Nobody is asking us to bring down the uh, quality of education. In fact, 
uh, NEP is all about enhancing the quality of education in a manner that it can be useful for the student. So education needs to inculcate a st strong personal ethic in the students. So when you are self learners, you need to be even more uh, disciplined, right? Uh, so to, and when we motivate them towards achieving self-reliance, critical awareness and confidence in accomplishments, we are not asking them to move away from quality education or from, you know, uh, 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 to, be, to be able to do things at will or, uh, you know, uh, give them marks, although they are not performing. But the, uh, the parameters for judging those performance, that performance has to change and be more adaptive. So let media uh, faculty adopt let's say outcome uh, based project outcome based and project based learning modules along with light but tight continuous assessment that incentive incentivizes the competencies imbibed through experiential learning and life skills so emphasis has to be on learning conceptual contextual understanding a very big emphasis on ethics and of course human values so that was about, you know, holistic and multidisciplinary education. The second thing that I'm emphasizing on, of course, is the need of the hour, which is to create the education 4.0 learning environment. So high time media education uh, would be, uh, you know, would become future ready and responsive. So we cannot say that just because we are looking at, you know, values, we are looking at, uh, uh, you know, uh, connecting media education to society uh, and we are looking at social good, that we can stay away from a technology which is all pervasive now, right? So uh, we must align journalism and mass communication media teaching with the needs of the network society and the next generation worlds of immersive virtual reality and augmented reality. If we try to tell our students, no, you have to learn the same way of doing newspaper like I did, you know, uh, print. Yes, they have to because the editing, accuracy, uh, all of that matters. But the method of doing it, the mode of doing it, the model of doing it has changed. You can do it on your laptop. You can do it on your phone. So now there's a lot of teaching which is, uh, uh, you know, ar around mobile journalism. So you have to adapt to your, the media education field to the present times. And this is also about digital empowerment, ensuring that advanced technology of uh, media serves the cause of transforming higher education. So this technology must be used, as I said earlier in the beginning, before I came into the communication education part, that our media technology should be able to benefit education as a whole, right? So the tech, uh, digital technologies that are available should enhance the way education is delivered also. And as you will agree with me, consequent to COVID-19 pandemic, the need to build an infrastructure, the structure which provides information, knowledge, uh, and the technical conditions for running teaching on multiple platforms and for encouraging a blend of remote and face-to-face -face learning has become imperative. It is not, uh, and the future is also about that. You cannot just have classroom teaching and you cannot just have, you know, face-to-face -face teaching or just remote learning. It has to be a combination of both. There has to be, you know, lecture mode and there has to be what are called flipped classrooms. So all of that technology is here to stay. It is good if communication departments would adopt to, uh, and adapt to this. Uh, the new generation of professionals are looking for what is called personalized learning environments. Many of them wanted to be self-paced courses. Uh, so those who wanted self-paced, give them self-paced. Those who want to do proper full-time classroom learning, we should be able to provide them with that. It's a, it should depend on the need of the student. The idea is to make everybody learn, to make education inclusive and for all, right? So self-paced courses, opportunities for interactive and collaborative work. And for all this, a judicious use of technology must be there to cater to the diverse needs of the students. The NEP 2020 
incorporates comprehensive recommendations for building of the digital infrastructure to address the fault lines of the indian digital divide so nep recognizes that there is a digital divide and that there needs to be some kind of a uh, way of addressing that media departments i have feel can contribute to this endeavor and this can be done not only through producing quality digital content but also by offering learner centered flexible curricula for their own media education right and also for educate other other courses also right that strengthen the unique capability of each student so digital technologies are being used in moocs and many other platforms where media has become an important uh, has uh, media technology has started playing a, an important role so uh, the nep says vocational education should start from class 6 so therefore the asymmetries of access to digital tools need to be plugged at that stage itself through introduction of technology and media literacy in the curriculum from the school stage so the next thing i want to talk about is uh, uh, you know taking from the nep again is to enable inclusion multilingualism and a culture of research so the new paradigm of media education must mirror and reflect the spirit of nep uh, that considers education as a leveler education for all all inclusive uh, education and also education in a manner that the people uh, that the which is student centric Uh, it it caters to the demands and needs of the student and therefore we must enable what are three things um, inclusion multilingualism and a culture of research uh, and media educators must designate must designate diversity training for inclusion it is important that uh, you know uh, while uh, that gender equality for example or sensitivity to caste sensitivity to class uh, the fact that people are different uh it should be a cross cutting theme through all courses of skill acquisition and of theory just a small example that if we are teaching students to write uh, how to write in a manner which is let's say sensitive to differently able people so that idea of inclusion not just it shouldn't just be a tokenism it should actually be present in the way we conduct our uh, our, our, our work right so one crucial step in this direction would be that media education must uh, for, for one crucial step towards inclusion would be that media education promotes multilingualism and enhances production capacity of high quality language journalism or regional media so students to be taught in the language that they are comfortable in at, is one thing and the other is it shouldn't be one kind one language media that should be dominating why can't media in all languages be of a of a world global standard right why can't it follow uh, quality be of of a quality which which uh, is is good and which is appreciated by all so uh, respect for all languages is something that needs to be inculcated another thing that needs to be inculcated and this is very important uh, people think media education uh, departments are just skill building uh, uh, you know uh, uh, places where people are, are where journalists are created for the market it is not that uh, it these are the hubs where a lot of good research which is socially relevant can happen uh, so most important for media departments and universities is to become what are called intellectual hubs or intellectual spaces uh, they must be spaces that foster outstanding interdisciplinary research that is socially oriented culturally rooted and brings in a plurality of perspectives and representation right a lot of the research that i do on community media follow some of those principles and it and the department gains from that research in many uh, other ways culture studies is another field where uh, you know research is carried out uh, in a manner which is contextual and which uh, which brings in multiple perspectives uh, and finally of course something as i said i'm very very um, passionate about is that media ethics needs to be a part of 
all curricula uh, uh, of uh, media educa that, that uh, media education departments follow and this is not about saying media ethics as one course which lists the do's and don'ts of uh, uh, of uh, uh, journalistic profession that is not just what we are talking about so before i get into this i'll just tell you quickly a story and this story came out in one of my projects that i was doing on media ethics curriculum development for the us consulate and we were interacting with the journalists and those journalists um, uh, were trying to help us come up with a curriculum which will you know which, which will also prepare young uh, uh, journalists for the media industry and uh, uh, you know uh, hoping that the new crop of journalists will be a conscientious uh, lot which will try and follow some ethical principles while uh, you know um, uh, while, while doing their job so the story is about a reporter who found himself stranded when his car broke down on the national highway and a child approached him for bag for you know uh, him begging for food what did the journalist do is followed the child to the nearby village where she lived and found her her living with her sick mother and siblings in abject poor completely uh, poverty stricken family uh, and the child's father had committed suicide uh, and died a year earlier now this journalist what did uh, he do he of course his job is to get the story so he did get the story but he took a personal interest in the child's life not just use it to uh, ha have a story and he began to cover the story of this child uh, whom he had just met as happenstance to portray the depth of rural poverty and plight of farming families in the state of telangana so the journalist ended up writing follow up story doing his job on the fam uh, on the family and for several years and linking it to the existing policies and connected the family to non governmental organizations and schemes in the area now what happened is uh, by doing this Uh, the uh, the journalist was you know doing the job that uh, a market oriented journalism uh, uh, institute uh, 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 organization is supposed to do but at the same time also uh, you know fulfilling his duty uh, of doing public good so what we are trying to say here is that when we mark against injustice as a core principle of journalistic practice you can bring this case study to your class and then tell your students that it is possible to address injustices even in a consumer media consumer driven media industry so there are there are, there is room for such kind of stories to be put in um, in the newspaper now another editor we talked to uh, you know spoke at length about his newspaper efforts to address sex tourism and poverty in the minority muslim community in hyderabad so teaching such, such uh, you know teaching through case studies such as this can speak to media students and tell them how their work could connect them to the efforts made by you know not just them but they can also connect to the work being done by governments to disallow such practices right so uh, having a very cynical approach saying that media is all bad and there is no scope to do good journalism is not right if you bring in good examples into the class it will give hope to the students that they are not just being uh, produced as uh, you know uh, uh, as uh, money uh, as as people who will bring money to the organization but they are also capable of doing social good so a journalism and media curriculum can teach students to focus on the lives of the people and impact both politics and people's lives so journalists and uh, you know at at the very beginning of uh, uh, you know when they are being trained if uh, journalists uh, media students uh, understand that they hold a power where they can do good they will follow it when they join the profession also so uh, i feel that as journalism schools take up a rigorous audit of their own practices there is a need for all media departments to do an internal audit to see what are what is their curriculum is their curriculum re, you know uh, 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 it, is it fulfilling the aims for which a media education department was set up not just to create 
people with skills but also with thinking ability so i propose that when you do that you consider an alternative to transmission driven industry conceived exclusively skills oriented model of journalism education and while it is useful to remain focused on uh, you know such practices building skills we must introduce an ethics curriculum that reconnects journalism with its domestic with its democratic and ethical roots so uh, an ethics program which is not just about giving uh, you know codes of ethics to students but whatever they do when they do reporting when they do editing when they do visual uh, media when they do audio connecting it all the time with cases which uh, helps them to think in a manner uh, you know uh, uh, that 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 uh, makes them do ethical journalism is what is the need of the art so such a curriculum could re uh, invigorate journalism programs and encourage more productive connections between the work of educators scholars and practitioners this kind of ethics training is needed even when we are doing research so i'll end by you know i know the time is for you to ask questions but i'll also end by just um, you know putting some uh, questions in the public domain uh, i'll start by saying in this increasingly convergent and challenging world how do we bring about change in our curriculum to make our students globally aware locally conscious and ethically grounded practitioners who will contribute to society and as you can see uh, this uh, reflects the spirit of the nep 2020 itself then the question how do we create commitment to principles of academic excellence and social justice leading to work that pushes the boundaries of the discipline and is theoretically informed sensitive and produces knowledge that can perform transformative roles so that is a question we need to ask when we build our curriculum uh, journalism education is considered to be a little anti theory we should not be scared of theory theory when connected with practice is what creates critical thinking and finally how must teachers reinvent themselves in the roles of collaborators enablers facilitators for providing a more holistic learning environment in an increasingly networked world in the hope to mentor students into being intellectually ambitious socially engaged willing to question and to reinvent themselves through their research and practice i'll stop here i uh, thank you so much and i'll be happy to take any questions thank you ma'am the session is open for interaction participants may use the raise hand option in the teams and please do mention your name and the institution Yes, uh, Pooja Mishra, ma'am, can ask question. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, this Good time, Pooja Mishra, and I'm speaking from Lucknow. I'm assistant professor in a Lucknow University affiliated college, that is Modern Girls College of Professional Studies. And ma'am, I was listening to your insight. It, it is a great insight, and these kind of discussion really help one, you know, to stay in touch with those essence. So, ma'am, you really talk well about the theory and the concepts that one need not to afraid of it. They need to understand. But what challenge I feel personally, and I am looking for your guidance and insight into it, is uh, uh, it is very difficult for the young students to make them understand how to apply those subjective and theoretical concept into real life, and specifically in the field of media, when they cannot see it in the field in the industry. so how we need to fill this particular gap very uh, this is a wonderful question uh, pooja thank you yeah uh, uh, you are uh, in fact voicing a concern that most of us have uh, one uh, uh, in terms of theory the other in terms of ethics so as far as theory is concerned you know we need to deconstruct theory for our students in a manner we must make them realize that theory is not something out there you know which we cannot understand and it is big words and it is philosophy it doesn't apply to the real world theory where does theory come from theory comes from the real world you know yes. it is uh, yeah 
it, it's it's uh, you know it's a way of telling people how things happen in real life so the best theory is the one which is closest to the reality so if we are able to you know relate theory to the way uh, journalism is practiced uh, and help that uh, you know become a way of thinking about journalism that it can be done you know in in another way also or you know it can be done differently or there there, there are different ways in which uh, some let's say a story can be covered or or so on it will help uh, and we have to make a beginning somewhere slowly just because it is not being done uh, you know doesn't mean it cannot be done and there are people who uh, derive a lot of uh, you know uh, let's say guidance from the theory that they study a lot of understanding uh, of the society from the theory that they study right and then reflect it in the reports that they are writing this is one but you are absolutely right in saying does industry allow that is there time when there is deadline on your head and when your owners are demanding you to give a breaking news yes there are problems and that is where our education our journalism education comes in if we were only supposed to create you know uh, 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 people who would go and give us a report without even using their mind go there mechanically write a report come and put it on um, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, on on television or uh, uh, give it to the news editor that's not the kind of journalist we want to create from university departments university is about thinking university is where people would first ethically think whether what they're doing is right or not rather than yes it could be a career career limiting step you will see other people uh, you know getting advantage by selling their souls but if even a few students are there who would think about the ethical ramifications of what they are doing uh, before they go and present a story uh, you know uh, on 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 in the media that they are working in you have uh, achieved your purpose of being a media educator so it is tough and tough things as i said are what uh, challenges are what help us bring about a change so yes there are people who do good journalism and why can't we be one of those right so ethical journalism is not something that has become non existent it is there and uh, there are ways of doing ethical journalism you have to find a way to do it you have to be smart right to be able to give news and at the same time also be able to do good yeah i hope that somehow answers the question that you have asked Absolutely it's not easy. <laughs> Yes. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Looks like everybody agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Dinesh has a question. <laughs> no ma'am the thing is like uh, we can have a different session for having a individual interaction when yes, we are framing sure. out our curriculum surely sure, i will be sure. in connecting with you uh, it will be my pleasure but Thank i you, think uh, one thing i would like to really encourage everybody to do is to have an audit of sorts uh, is it okay to talk 2 minutes about that sure ma'am uh, if uh, all of us could go back to our departments and have what is called an academic audit where we do a kind of a needs based assessment about what teachers think about uh, the curriculum what students think about the curriculum your uh, alumni what do they think about the curriculum you know we did an exercise like that when uh, in in my department uh, and this uh, with the help of very senior faculty members uh, we put the whole uh, you know a concept together of how an academic audit could be done we invited three people from outside uh, the department to give their suggestions they interacted with faculty with students with alumni with media people uh, in order to understand the media's point of view of what they need from journalism uh, departments and then we reworked our uh, curricula in the light also of the new technological changes that are happening and we have moved from you know teaching uh, uh, of course uh, the as i said the primary objectives remain the same but we have moved for example to teaching more uh, digital kind of media 
to more convergence uh, you know kind of approach in our teaching so that was one thing then you know that uh, students should be given a basket of courses where they if they a uh, student who is interested in theory can or and research can also pick a skills course a student who is interested in skills can also pick a theory course in order to uh, you know have and and then there should be a lot of electives where they can go to other departments and studied i and I, i understand this is uh, uh, very similar again to what has been proposed as uh, the credit based um, uh, system uh, that that we all are following so good to have a you know look at what we are doing right now and where we need to go yeah. yes right. thank you um, ma'am ma'am yeah if i am allowed can i put some my side into this particular same discussion am i allowed sir Sure, sure. I mean, sure. I, uh, Dine, uh, Dinesh has. Yes, you, sure, ma'am. Sure, sure, sure. Actually, ma'am, you have really uh, raised a great point over here, and I want to share my personal experience on this particular aspect, ma'am. I am doing from a very long time a uh, research independently by myself, uh, where I am trying to compare the different syllabus of the different universities and the colleges we are having all over the India, and the. inside which i got over here is ma'am we have a huge gap between the syllabus and the content which we are teaching in different corners of the country specifically the private universities and the government universities where uh, i don't know why the standardization of the content is not there and still people think that only memorizing and putting journalism as a easiest option is the best way to go for it and you said absolutely correct that from video editing to the writing skills and speaking skills are very important point which is not really being practiced in the creative labs which need to do and i have one of my students over here she is from medical field she prepared for neat she was not able to crack it then she entered into journalism so i tried to make her understand that how her knowledge of science and environment yes. and climate change can add up and create a real niche of being a environmental journalist and the field of media in the environment and climate change mm -hmm. so uh, i don't know uh, yeah. what is the insight but when you talk so i prefer to share this thing over here very interesting but uh, yeah you are absolutely right journalism is one uh, discipline where students come from different backgrounds you don't necessarily have to have done your undergrad in journalism in order to join journalism so they come from various backgrounds we get lawyers we get engineers we get like you have said a medical student all kinds of students so some amount of basics and you know standardized uh, curriculum may be important and we need to know the core competencies that must be created within the curriculum but i must say one small thing that it also depends on the teacher who is delivering the uh, curriculum in our de department and i'm very proud and happy to say that uh all some aspects of the curriculum are fixed of course because they need to be done but a lot of um, uh, freedom is given to the teacher who is teaching to decide on what they would like to be a part of that course that they are teaching apart yeah. from those basics that are there so uh, which brings in the experience and the expertise of the teacher also into uh, the curriculum so if i am teaching uh, let's say um, history of media i would teach it let us say in a manner which is received history right uh, and then try to also bring in uh, the history of women uh, journalists in, um, uh, in in india and so on but uh, bringing in history of women journalism is uh, uh, women journalists is not a mandatory thing in history whereas there is another person who is teaching history they would teach it more from a theoretical point of view of histo historiography of history which is alternative history as as as, as they say yeah revisionist kind of history that is happening in um, that they would like to focus on not saying that they will not talk about the received history they will but they'll critique it by also bringing in revisionist you know versions of history so uh, it's very interesting if we have a mix of standardized and flexible curriculum uh, uh, in the in the uh, in in the country where the expertise and of of uh, uh, the the faculty also gets reflected in the curriculum so uh, that that will be very interesting also sure ma'am it's yes. a great insight 
I'll try to merge these things. Sure. No, no. You can yes. look at curriculum from this point of view also in your research. Absolutely. Sure. And Dr. Kanchan, ma'am, yes. uh, I have to add on some more things. Like uh, while we are just focusing on framing out a curriculum based on industrial requirements and all, we will be inviting the industrialists to have a discussion regarding uh, framing out a curriculum and all. But at the same time, we have to also discuss uh, the same industry has to come forward to bring out some research aspects. Actually. Which will helps the students to undergo with the uh, experimental study. Certainly, certainly, yes. Yes, in like fact, uh, what uh, uh, what your university you you people is doing with the Facebook and uh, the social medias and its importance yes. and all. Likewise, yes. yes, absolutely. In fact, the industry can benefit a lot if they collaborate with you to do research on their own. Uh, you know, uh, on the work that they are doing. So yes. asking universities to do the research would be a very very interesting way of collaborating with the industry. Yes. 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 So yes. absolutely. That will be so well you, and good. That will be a wonderful kind of a university inter uh, industry interaction. Absolutely. Yes. Wonderful idea. I mean, I would like to add on, like I'm uh, Dr. Shemin, a freelance academic. I think it's also good to add on if the industry could uh, use the academia uh, to you know do impact assessments of their own projects you know which would uh, really help yes. impact assessment and i mean certainly you mentioned something about that you know that, that yes yes it's thing which is kind of you know so i think it's uh, essentially when the industry and the you know academia come together you can frame up strategies and you know that would it's, it's like mutually complementary factor like right Absolutely. Exactly. No, no, you are very right. Uh, if industry is there, uh, whatever research you are doing, what social impact it has, or what, how is it benefiting the public, is a very important aspect to go into. Another a very important point you have raised. So, so that's that's very interesting. Another important thing that I had focused on, and I hope it came out in the presentation, was that uh, you know, uh, not just media education departments. But media education needs to be open to other departments also for other department students to come and take uh, uh, our courses also. Mm. And if media yes. education could be introduced as uh, especially the what, what is now being called media literacy yes. on the effects and impact, as you have said, of digital world or digital media on people, right? So that is also very very interesting uh, aspect. Uh, so yes. consumption of digital media is, is you know and and the impact it has on people's lives is a very interesting aspect that can be uh, talked about in research as well as in teaching. And uh, even ma'am, uh, while we are just teaching out the students, for example, based uh, discussing about media literacy. So mainly this has to come from uh, school education. So, if it is possible, our post-graduation students learning from us and if they are going for giving out a training sessions to the school students to know and understand about the media literacy and coming back and getting out a credits or score for that particular assigned work, it will be more benefit. Oh, very nice. That 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 is exactly the kind of thing I was talking about. That you, yes, uh, the, yes the experiential learning that they will get, you know, yes. by doing project-based work which will yes. they will learn on their own instead of learning in a class by first hand they will be learning this and also uh, when you're talking about media literacy these days so much of training is needed about disinformation uh, fake news aspects related to what is now being called infodemic right uh, i'm sure many of your students will be interested in how pictures are doctored right misrepresentation mm -hmm. through pictures so pictures. the picture is saying something different from what is actually the fact. I mean, there can be a whole, uh, uh, you know, series of, uh, th there can be a whole lecture on how uh, photos are manipulated to present fa things which are not factual, right? Mm -hmm. So, and how, what are the ethical issues related to uh, photojournalism? Uh, you know, that, that's a different topic altogether. Again, if you were to ask your students to do a project on that, they will come up with very interesting insights. Wonderful yes. idea. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, any other All questions right. from audience side? I hope it was not too theoretical, <laughs> Puja. <laughs> it is more interactive yeah. and more informative too. Not at all, ma'am. I really got a lot of insights over here. 
Uh, so, okay. so I tried to connect the actual curriculum with, you know, this concept of uh, by, by Paulo Freire, who says we should democratize education, basically. We should try to make students a part of the learning process, which is what Dinesh just now mentioned also. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. And I invite Dr. Dinesh Babu, the head of the Department of Visual Media and Communication, to thank the guest. Yes, uh, I have to informally just thank uh, our guest initially because uh, it is a good opportunity to meet her uh, as soon because of this blended learning and kind of webinar and all. So thank you, ma'am, Dr. Kanchan Malik. It was an indeed and wonderful session that insights the importance of focusing on the changing paradigms in media and communication research. So it will be more, more truthful for us to incorporate these all uh, inputs towards our curriculum designs. Thank you so much uh, on behalf of Amrita School of Arts and Science, Amrita Vishwavidya Bidam University, on behalf of our faculties, faculty members, I am thanking you and uh, we are just uh, moving forward and looking forward to work with you in future. Sure. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dinesh, and thank you to Amrita Vishwavidya Pitam, right? I hope I yes, got the name right for inviting me. It was such a pleasure. If you want, I'll share my presentation with you. I'll send it to Dinesh. You can share it with all the participants. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Right. We are also doing like uh, today in the evening, we are going to give out uh, the inputs which is uh, taken from this three day as a show winner. So we will be sending to all the participants with the e-certificate. We will send the e-show winner also. And um, <laughs> the guest will also get one hot copy of the show winner. Oh, Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Such you, a sir. pleasure to interact with all of you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Thank you.